Good morning, I'm Alan, and I'm glad that you're joining us for our online Sunday Bible study. And I hope that you'll follow along with a Bible or a Bible reading app or your Kindle. And today's lesson picks up on a lesson we had earlier in January about Jesus at the well with the Samaritan woman. And so it's all about different but the same. And Jesus talks with a Samaritan, and it's from John chapter 4, verses 7 through 15, 28 through 30, and 39 through 41. So let's look at the background. During this time that this is taking place, Jews and Samaritans hated each other. And because they had this this relationship where they didn't like each other, Jews did not travel through the region of Samaria. But John tells us that Jesus is passing from Judea to Galilee, and he's taken the road that leads directly through Samaria. Now, being a Jew, Jesus was vulnerable to mistreatment and even violence from the Samaritan people. That's how much they disliked each other. What makes this story so great is that Jesus befriends a Samaritan woman and shows her love and kindness. Now, typically, a man of Jesus' heritage would not speak to a Samaritan woman. And Jesus is doing something different. He is replacing hatred with love. Jesus has been preaching. He's been traveling for many days. And, of course, he was poor with just basically the clothes on his back and his sandals And so he traveled by foot as the poor people of the day did. And Jesus was tired after all the teaching and all the traveling. So remember, Jesus was fully God and he was fully human. So he's experienced everything that we've experienced. But he's tired and he sits down at the well to rest. Now, Samaria had a road running through it, but to get to Samaria, you had to go up and down hills. And walking, that takes a lot of energy. Jesus was headed to Galilee at this time. And the reason why he had to leave, the reason why he had to leave Judea, was heading back to Galilee, is because the Pharisees were angry because they had heard that Jesus was baptizing more disciples than John the Baptist was. The truth was, it was Jesus' disciples who were baptizing the people. Anyways, this lesson shows us that life is unfair. Life is full of discrimination, but God does not discriminate. So in today's lesson, we'll see how Jesus accepts all people regardless of society standards, and welcomes them into the kingdom of heaven. So our lesson begins today with chapter 4, verse 7. There came a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus said to her, Give me a drink, for his disciples had gone away into the city to buy food. Therefore the Samaritan woman said to him, How is it that you, being a Jew, ask me for a drink, since I am a Samaritan woman? For Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. Jesus answered and said to her, Everyone who drinks of this water will thirst again. But whoever drinks of this water that I give him shall never thirst. But the water that I will give him will become in him a well of water, springing up to eternal life. At the beginning of this story, we find Jesus in a rather unique circumstance. He's alone. That was quite rare in those days because he always had the disciples around him. He was always being followed by people that were looking for for a miracle or a healing or a touch or just a word of wisdom from the master and creator. And so his disciples have gone into town to buy food and Jesus is sitting by the well just resting. 
and a Samaritan woman comes in the middle of the day to fill her water jar. And Jesus asks her for a drink. And she's surprised and confused by this. And so she asks some questions of Jesus. She didn't understand why he would ask her for water, let alone even recognize that she existed, because she knew the cultural rules of her time. And there were three reasons why she was shocked by Jesus' actions. Number one, Jewish men did not initiate conversation with unknown women. Number two, Jewish teachers did not hold public discussions with women. And three, as I said before, the Jews and the Samaritans hated each other, and so they did not talk. If you don't talk, it's a difficult, it's a difficult way to resolve differences. Throughout this lesson, throughout their discussion, it's obvious that this woman is very knowledgeable. She asked Jesus based on her knowledge of the culture and the history and religious beliefs. She knew the history of the land. She knew the cultural drama between the Jews and the Samaritans. And she knew about the prophecy of a coming Messiah. And then it says, in, The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so I will not be thirsty, nor come all the way here to draw verse 15 that she was eager or thirsty to learn more and hung on Jesus every word so the woman left her water pot and went into the city and said to the men come and see a man who told me all the things I have done this is not the Christ is it they went out of the city and were coming to him then we get to the part of telling others Amazed by what she heard, the Samaritan left her water jar and went to tell others about Jesus. And once she reached the town, the Samaritan woman told people what Jesus had told her. She, she suggested that he may very well be the Messiah. Of course, like the Samaritan woman, others in the region had heard about this miracle-working teacher named Jesus. None had met him at this time yet. But now, the woman telling them many had a chance to see him and meet him. And so the Samaritan's word, the Samaritan woman's words about Jesus being the Christ or the Messiah sparked the interest of others in the town. And because of her excitement, people left what they were doing, and they headed to the well to see Jesus. I mean, how authentic was this woman's amazement and faith? Now, we know she's a woman of questionable re reputation, but she convinced an entire town of Samaritans to stop their work, to leave their businesses, and to put their livelihoods on hold, to see a Jewish man who might be the Messiah. Her faith and her joy were contagious, and she broke down some more cultural barriers. Jesus Christ had changed her life in a significant way. From that city, many of the Samaritans believed in him because of the word of the woman who testified. He told me all the things I've done. So when the Samaritans came to Jesus, they were asking him to stay with them, and he stayed there two days. Many more believed because of his word. And so we read about the Messiah being revealed in verses 39 and 41. Now, there's a contrast here in chapter 4 from chapter 3. Chapter 3 we have Jesus being visited by Nicodemus, who is a member of the Sanhedrin, the Jewish ruling council. He was one of the most prominent teachers of the day. And he recognizes something special in Jesus, and he confesses that God is somehow with Jesus, he ends up resisting everything that Jesus tells him. 
And there's no evidence that Nicodemus came to faith when he first met Jesus. And this great leader, this great teacher, finds it difficult to follow, to understand Jesus. So he tells no one and he leads or brings no one back with him to see Jesus. In fact, he came to him at night. But the woman at the well seems much more perceptive. She's much more receptive to what Jesus has to say. And she's well on her way to faith as the result of her first conversation with him. And more than this, she brings others back to see Jesus. Who would have ever imagined how little Nicodemus would do for the kingdom of God? How much God would use this Samaritan woman? Now, later on, Nicodemus is used by God. But at this time, virtually nothing happened. It all fell to the Samaritan woman, bringing others to learn and see Jesus. And leaving her water jar behind, it tells us that this woman left in a hurry, or she wanted to travel lightly and quickly so she could bring her man back to meet Jesus. And the town that she went to was Sychar, which is only mentioned in John chapter 4, verse 5. It's in close proximity to both Mount Gerizim and Mount Ebal. But look at the faith this Samaritan woman had as reflected by her words. I'm sure the people that she told were reluctant to believe her words at first. But she convinced them to come and see Jesus. They no longer relied on her testimony. Now they heard what Jesus had to say for himself. Now we're told of no miracles other than Jesus letting this woman know that he knew all about her life of sin. There were no signs or wonders recorded in John's gospel about what might have happened while Jesus was at the well. In Samaria, we just know that this woman herself was the miracle. It also shows us that the Samaritans had this, this greater faith than mere looking for signs because as far as we can tell, Jesus did no miracles, did no signs and wonders. Their faith is based on what they knew from the Word of God, based on what they heard Jesus say, and they came to trust Jesus as Messiah, as Savior of the world. So what's the lesson for our society? Well, one of the key points of today's lesson is to avoid discrimination and unbiblical principles. People have been inflicting all kinds of discriminations, all kinds of boundaries since the beginning of time. And really what it comes down to is a selfish struggle for power. Skin color, religious beliefs, health, age, gender, financial worth are just some of the empty reasons that people have turned on each other or discriminated against each other. Here in the United States, African Americans have been discriminated just based on the color of their skin. And now, because of Jesus, they have an opportunity for forgiveness and to share Christ's love with others, just like the Samaritan woman was discriminated against and went and shared Christ's love. People of faith must overcome cultural barriers to grow as Christians and share the message of salvation. And Jesus revealed to the Samaritan woman and to us that his love goes beyond society's boundaries, 
His love extends to all people. He loves everyone regardless of their gender, their nationality, their social class. And so therefore, as Christians, we must follow Christ's example and reach out to everyone, including society's outcasts, to share Christ's love with others. And so what we need to do is we need to challenge ourselves to extend a loving hand and to share the message of Jesus Christ to someone who's having a tough time or someone who is outside of society's norms or just someone who needs to see the love of God. And so that's our mission. That's our task. Let us pray. Father, we thank you. We thank you for your love. We thank you for showing us a better way, a different way. Help us to follow your way, the way of love. Help us to tell others of the things that you're doing, have done, and will continue to do because of your love for all humanity. Help us to share that love. Help us to show our faith to others so that they come to experience you and see you for themselves. We ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Don't forget, today here in Paris, 10, 10 a.m., we have worship live. It will also be on Facebook and YouTube. Invite a friend to come with you. Invite a friend to watch with you online. And we hope to see you then. Have a great Sunday.